We absolutely love Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order here. We're having a ton of fun with it, but even the biggest fans have their own small complaints, petty grievances, and just things that are straight up annoying. So like with a lot of the big games that release, we scour the internet, forums, and social media to see what's driving people crazy in Fallen Order. Some of this is constructive criticism and some nitpicking and actually some self-reflection. So let's just get started off with number 10. Something that we definitely all hate is trying to get back to the Mantis. Now, you know what I mean. You, you, you traverse through a massive map, an entire planet, complete your objective, and then you're faced with hoofing it all the way, all the way, all the way back to your ship because Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order made the decision to not have fast travel in the game, which, you know, honestly still is a decision that I, I pretty much respect, but every once in a while it gets really tedious, especially when you're on a planet, you know, one of the maps where things are really intense like Dathomir, you look at that map on your hologram and it just looks so, so daunting. Thankfully, I do think that the game is designed well enough that like finding your way back, especially with new abilities, does keep things interesting, does keep it fresh. But when you're not on a main quest and you're just kind of grinding around and looking for hidden stuff, sometimes finding your way back to the ship is a big pain in the ass, especially if you're getting wrecked by enemies the whole time. You know what I mean? Very curious to see what you guys think of this one though. Do you think it's a decision that just keeps things very grounded and just keeps you kind of always in play? Or do you think it makes the game longer and it's padding? Well, let us know. But next at number nine, we gotta talk about Ogdo Bogdo, that damn son of a bitch. So you started off the game and you know, one of the first big explorable planets is Bagano. Seemingly at first a harmless, nice, grassy, uh, cliff face planet. Uh, one false move, one wrong turn, you'll fall into a pit and you'll face off against Ogdo Bogdo. Now a lot of people hate these guys for a good reason. He's one of those early enemies in this style of Souls-like game. A named enemy, a really powerful one that can grind you into the dust if you're still learning the mechanics of the game. And we've seen a lot of people complain about getting their ass beat by him over and over and over again. Honestly, it's a pretty tough fight if you're still kind of getting your feet wet in Fallen Order, you know? His red powerful move always seems just a little bit too tricky to dodge. His attacks do massive, massive damage, and he's surprisingly fast considering he's just kind of like a weird massive frog. So people have been <laughs> rightly frustrated. Uh, thankfully, the feeling you get when you finally defeat him is pretty good, especially if you've attempted it like 20 times. Also, random fun fact for you beginners though, but if, if you find the hole that he lives in and you do a jump down attack, you can actually get a good advantage on the fight because you can take away almost 40% of his health. Because honestly though, you know, there's a lot of memes about him and stuff, but if you think Agdo Bagdo is hard, you haven't seen anything yet. Now, moving on over to number eight, let's talk about that stupid pink poncho you get, that useless poncho that you get after killing Agdo Bagdo. Yes, that's what you earn. There's a crate near him. And, and that is your big reward. An ugly poncho that I get some people like having like the over the top color in the game, but for, for me, it kind of like takes me out of it. I'm playing for immersion. Don't mind me, I'm a weird Star Wars nerd, but I just couldn't imagine Cal actually rocking the pink poncho. But again, that's my Cal. Your Cal might be different. Still, I wish there was a bit more of a reward for killing that punk besides experience points, but I guess this is what we have to settle with, right? Now, next at number seven, since we did focus on like the named bad guys giving you a living hell. Uh, let's talk about just some of the regular enemies out and about that are an absolute pain in the ass. I've seen a lot of people bitch about the Phylax. Those are like the space mountain goats that you find on Zepho. I think the funniest thing though is that these guys are kind of more threatening than your average stormtrooper. And uh, I I've seen a lot of people just get their asses kicked by these things on YouTube and on streams. But again, it's like any game, it's like a get good thing. Once you figure out their attack patterns, you're fine. But they do have a very uncanny and very annoying ability to kind of power through and not get staggered by a, a lot of your attacks. Those freaking space goat sons of bitch. But uh, they're also the flying enemies, the little bat style enemies on Kashyyyk. Those drove me nuts because you don't really have a lot of aerial attacks other than the force. So uh, those really pissed me off. But of course, this is a video for complaining and grieving about some of your favorite games. So I'm very curious to see what your least favorite enemy is in the comments. What do you hate the most? Now, next over at number six, let's talk about those crates we mentioned earlier. Uh, we've seen a lot of people just kind of make fun of and kind of complain about the actual crate opening animation, how Cal is just always consistently surprised that he jumps in and rummages around. Like BD1 does it for hours and hours. Thankfully, the dialogue does eventually change and kind of reflect that. 
Cal isn't always just surprised that he's jumping in, like, okay. Like I said, really, really petty complaints in this video. That's definitely one of them, because it's like, you know, you're opening a box for the 70th time, and Cal's like, oh, hey, what do you got in there? What are you doing? It's just silly. I think for me, the, the bigger issue is just that the animation gets a little tedious, especially because, like, when you're exploring, you do find quite a bit of these crates. Uh, but still, we're pointing this one out because we saw a couple of threads on it. Uh, honestly, I think it's kind of silly. Now, at number five, oh my god, okay, this one I hate, and I know a lot of you guys probably hate. If you care about this stuff, maybe if you're a Star Wars fan, getting the game spoiled for you thanks to YouTube thumbnails. You might be browsing, you've been watching some Fallen Order trailers, you know, maybe some reviews leading up to the game, and suddenly YouTube decides to recommend you uh, on the sidebar, final ending boss, with a reveal or just a shot from the actual end of the game, just straight up in the thumbnail, like, dude, come on. Come on. It happens with movies too, and especially if you just engage in like watching movie reviews, game reviews, if you're in those communities, this happens quite a bit. Some people are really hardcore. I am with certain things. I go on complete media blackout when there's something I really want to enjoy and I don't want it spoiled for me because I like being surprised. Some people don't care, and it clearly seems like some people that make some content out there also don't care. So just watch out for that shit. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about spiders. Spiders are everywhere in this game. I feel like spiders are like the main antagonist. You got big, giant, nasty spiders on Kashyyyk that are everywhere. Then you have little, tiny, annoying, poisonous spiders everywhere all over Dathomir. And it's paced annoyingly because like you get off Kashyyyk and you think you're finally safe from all the spiders and then you end up on Dathomir and there's just more spiders. Why are spiders like the, the bane of a Jedi's existence? I do not know. Some people really, really hate spiders. They make them cringe, they bother people. For me, I just found them a really annoying enemy that was pretty difficult and I just didn't want to fight. I actually, in general, don't like when games like use spiders as a fallback. They're like, I don't know, what do we put here? I don't know, giant killer spiders. I think in the Star Wars universe, sometimes you can do better. Kashyyyk, it makes sense, I get it. But Dathomir, we could have come up with some other stuff. Now down to number three, losing all of your experience points when you die. That's annoying as hell. Now, of course, as you would probably know, the way these games work is a Souls-like system where you run around, you kill enemies, you gain experience points, but if you die, the enemy that killed you will be holding those experience points and essentially you gotta respawn, find your way back to that enemy and take him out so you can get your stuff back. If you die on your way to doing that, uh, you lose all of your experience points altogether. Now, I think that is a very challenging and satisfying gameplay loop and a lot, a lot of people agree, but you gotta admit, it still freaking sucks when you lose it. That shit is painful. It just leads to the point I kind of always try and make in these stupid videos is that uh, <laughs> sometimes the thing you hate about a game the most is yourself when you screw up. And you know what? It's okay. There's always next time. You'll go get them. There's more experience points out there. There's always endless stupid stormtroopers to kill. So go get them. Now, down to number two, something that a lot of people hate is the current state of the performance of the game. Uh, across various platforms, there have been uh, lots of reported issues from uh, glitches, uh, bugs like people falling through the map, getting stuck in the environment, the game crashing. There's also been reports of a game breaking, like, like a save bug at a certain point. Not to mention there's just some weird animations here and there and on consoles, even on the upgraded consoles, uh, the frame rate can sometimes drop pretty substantially. That's a shame and it's really frustrating because some people are really sensitive to that type of performance stuff and just don't want to deal with it. And I think it's a shame because the game can look damn good, especially like if you look at the PC version, if it's running well, that is like, of course, how the game should absolutely look. And it's a shame that sometimes it just deals with weird graphical issues like flickering, uh, frame rate drops, stuff like that. For me personally, if you watched it before you buy, I definitely pointed out the issues. PS4 seems like it has the worst right now, but it still didn't deter me from the actual game. I still had fun. There were some frustrating bits, but ultimately, but that's just me. People really, really hate glitches and performance issues. And some people have a higher tolerance than others, but we know people definitely hate it here. Now, number one, something that it seems like a lot of people hate is uh, accidentally deciding to just traipse over to Dathomir before actually going to Zepho. The game is smart to give the player some freedom, some choice to go explore and check out what you wanna do. The main mission, of course, should bring you to Zepho first, but you're free to go to Dathomir, where it's a little harder if you wanna challenge and you wanna explore a little and see a cool world. But pretty quickly you realize that you can only do so much on Dathomir because of your current abilities for like traversal and getting through the environment. And you're just running around screaming, getting your ass kicked by a Zabrax and also 
killer spiders like I mentioned earlier. You can work your way pretty far through it and, and it's actually kind of worth it if you find and earn some certain things. But when you know you haven't really, really gotten through the game and like you haven't gotten your feet wet everywhere, it can be a little bit of a nightmare. Especially if you get lost. Good luck with that, because Dathomir can be crazy. And it seems like some people really kind of hated it. Maybe not the planet itself, but uh, going there for the first time and kind of biting off more than you can chew, you know? But those are 10 things players seem to hate in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. As you can tell, it's really small stuff, silly stuff, worth more poking fun at than anything, nothing really ruining the game. But of course, we do these videos because the comments can be interesting. If there's anything about the game, if you're enjoying it, that still manages to drive you nuts, let us know. We definitely like to hear from you guys and we love talking about this game. But you know, if you had a good time, maybe you're related to some of these, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We'd really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell because we put out new videos every single day. But hey, as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.